Second City Theater in Hollywood, it's After Dark with Julian Clark! Brought to you by Speaker, Golden FM, and Golden Road Brewing, with special guests from CW's Containment, and hit shows, Farscape, and in Stargate, SG-1, Claudia Black! Yeah. With music from the infamous Morgan and the Mercury Five, those devils. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a crippling fear of talking to people in public, but I got over it just for your host. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the fabulous Julian Clark! How's everyone doing tonight? Another round of applause to Marine and the Mercury Five. Yeah. Oh yeah. How are you doing tonight, Marine? I had a really bad date last night. Okay. I'm drinking it away. No worries. No, I I just feel like if I put all these guys together, I would have the perfect man. I mean, you got Alex the goofball, and Scotty's got swagger. And Sylvan's the French cowboy, that little pout. And Steve's got a really big... Marine. Bass. Okay. Big bass. Get used to it, guys. Those are the jokes you're gonna be hearing tonight. Uh, I know. <laughs> Just everyone leaves. But no, Cash, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I had a really awesome week. Awesome week. Lots of auditions. Nice. Way to rub it in my face, but go ahead. Not a problem. Uh, I actually got a part in the new Star Wars movie. Oh my god, Cash? <laughs> it was super awesome. They were really cool about it. They were like, just sign this form, make sure you don't tell anybody about it. And it oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kind of jokes you're going to be. Good night. Nice. Uh, guys, we have a great show. Claudia Black is here. Yeah. CW's The Containment, Stargate SG-1, and Farscape, all three great shows. Um, a lot of interesting stuff has happened since our last taping, our last show. I don't know if you guys heard, uh, but Paris Hilton is producing a documentary about herself. Um, and that's not the joke. Um, <laughs> Hilton said it will be an unflinching, authorized documentary about her rise to fame. Can't wait to see it, said 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! Hey, we got her. <laughs> Woo, take that. <laughs> an Arizona student who showed his penis in his high school football team photo was arrested briefly after his high school unwittingly sent the image to hundreds of Phoenix area classmates as part of its yearbook. The student is credited with truly leaving it all out on the field. <laughs> Reese's will now fill their peanut butter cups with Reese's Pieces. Mm. I know. Exciting. 2016, off to a great start. <laughs> Said Reese's, it's the best way to hate yourself twice. <laughs> Michael Strahan, mm -hmm. you know him guys. Uh, Michael Strahan has left live with Kelly amid, amid controversy. Inside sources claim Kelly Ripa took the news very badly and was so upset that she fell off the bandwagon and started eating again. <laughs> Ted Cruz. Uh, <laughs> Ted Cruz, everyone, uh, pulled out of the Republican presidential race. Yeah. So upsetting. Everyone's so upset about that. <laughs> Said his children who hate him, why couldn't you learn how to pull out eight years ago, Dad? And that's all the jokes we wrote. <laughs> hey, folks, welcome back. Um, another round of applause to Marina and the Mercury Five. <laughs> You're looking so sultry tonight. I I'm love it. Sassy. I feel it's like spicy. It's like curry. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, um, I don't know if you heard. Cash, I love curry, by the way. I do. I was about to say. Yeah, that was, that was the entire point of that. I just want the audience to know I love Indian cuisine. <laughs> um, guys, I don't know if you heard, but Donald Trump <laughs> recently announced uh, to supporters at a rally that he will keep posting from his personal Twitter account even if he is elected president. <sighs> Thank God, I was really worried for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we here at After Dark couldn't help but think what some of those tweets would be, which leads us to our first segment, Trump Tweets! Two, three, four. Trump Tweets! <laughs> 
Trump tweets. Does this work? Is this good? Is it close? You look fabulous. I, I know I do. Let's Thank get you. started with the first tweet from a President Trump. Don't miss epic inauguration speech brought to you by Taco Bell. Live Moss. Hashtag I love Hispanics. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Bye bye Rose Garden. Hello beautiful Trump urban loss. The definition of class, right now I get a free Keurig. <laughs> those are dangerous though, you can't recycle those. That's true. Heads up. Trade negotiations with China are tough. The nothing winner of next season's Apprentice can't handle. I'm really concerned about my hair. <laughs> Thrilled to announce new slavery free US history books. Published by Doritos. Books of Cool Ranch flavored, yum. <laughs> <laughs> Chips. Can the cast of Shaws of Sunset replace the Supreme Court? Find out tonight, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central, only on E. Well, the sad part is that could be true. It really could be true. That's really fucked. <laughs> Beautiful new White House casino features 25 cent slots and all you can eat ribs until 4 p.m. in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> Issuing a presidential part in the Fuller House, let's never forget this dark time in our nation's history. <laughs> that feels like it's out of it. Like that doesn't belong in these series yeah, of tweets. Yeah, but still. Yeah. I, I, I give it a I get it. Yeah. In celebration of Black History Month, C-SPAN will be running Best of Sanford and Sons. Don't hiss me. Don't do it. Next one. Periscoping from the war zone this afternoon. You thought the Iraq war was big. Wait till you see this one. Leave questions in the comments. <laughs> Jesus. Tonight's State of Union address is sponsored by Pornhub. Looking for honey singles in your area? Click on the banner, add now. <laughs> That's great. That's Trump tweets. Thank you. Thank you. Trump tweets. Trump tweets. <laughs> Cash. Yes. What do you think of lemonade? Uh, lemonade, they got good prices, uh, decent vegan options. No, no, I'm not talking about lem Lemonade the Lunch Place. I'm talking about Lemonade the Beyonce album. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, in her new song, Sorry, she claims that Jay-Z cheated with her uh, uh, from a woman named Becky with the Good Hair, leaving a lot of people to speculate who this Becky with the Good Hair actually is. Our next guest claims to be that woman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Becky with the Good Hair. <laughs> Becky, Becky, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. So, you're the Becky with the good hair from the Beyonce song. That's me, Becky with the good hair. Behold, I both rinse and repeat. Prell is the best, Julian. Lots of women swear by suave or even pert, but it's all about Prell. You can really feel the difference in that extra 75 cents. Are you sure you're the girl that Beyonce's singing about? I think what Cash is trying to say, you're lying, right? No, I'm not lying. Why is it so hard for everyone to believe that I'm the woman that sent Beyonce into a jealous rage? <laughs> I, yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, you're I just, not. I think we thought that Becky with the good hair would be someone a little more... Trampy? More... <laughs> confident? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Julian, that we can't all be a bunch of Eleanor Roosevelt's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so how, did, um, how did you and Jay-Z actually meet? I was standing outside the Beverly Center soliciting... <laughs> Wait, what? <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Soliciting for donations to help save the library. When I saw Jay-Z come up to me and say, uh, Hey, excuse me, are you the valet? He's scandalous, huh? Wait, so that's it? Beyonce stood nearby, fire in her eyes. I could tell she would be talking to him that night, raging with jealousy over her erotic encounter. Wait, so I'm so confused. So if that's the way you guys met, how are you Becky with the good hair from the song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm not no. buying it either. Well, well, if I'm not Becky with the good hair, then uh, why did I get all of these threatening emails from Beyonce? Let me see this. Yeah, take a look, you and you go look. Oh my god. 
These are emails from Beyonce's attorneys telling you to stop sending envelopes of hair to her. <laughs> the first one is dated 2011. She can't make me the other woman forever. Sooner or later, he'll come back for what he wants. Becky with the good hair, everyone. I'm sexual. <clears throat> More like Becky with the okay hair, frankly. It was okay. It was yeah. okay. Uh, guys, it's, uh, the show has literally flown by, uh, and it is time to introduce our guest. Uh, Claudia Black uh, is almost sci-fi royalty in uh, many aspects. Uh, she's currently on CW's The Containment, though she has experience on Stargate SG-1 and Farscape, and I believe we have a clip uh, from a future episode of The Containment. Let's roll it. Rationing by its very nature makes people even hungrier. Hunger creates chaos. You want to talk about chaos? Drop that much food into a quarantine zone without preparation. Are you familiar with what went on in Sierra Leone? I know a lot of people died. They did. And I was part of the effort to keep people from dying. We had a lot of good, smart people working that problem, but in a few key moments, we waited. We were too cautious. There was red tape everywhere. I don't want that to happen here, and I don't want it to happen to your city, not on my watch. So cheer up, Major. You're getting food to your people tomorrow. <laughs> and then they literally had sex. Yeah. That's how what? that clip would end. No, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Claudia Black! <laughs> I'm dying that that's the clip you showed. I'm <laughs> dying. And a long clip. I was like, wow, we got the episode. That's great. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't stop talking. It's just, it well, goes There's nothing wrong with on. that. When you have like a big role on a show like that, you I mean, you might as well like flaunt it. You're like, I got multiple lines. Right, you know, <laughs> I, got, I got hair, I got lines. So I got to ask you. Yes. You've been in two shows now. Yes. Where you either live or are from the city of Atlantis. So I gotta ask, mm. is there a city of Atlantis and is there a Sandals? Because I really wanna know. Is there a what? A Sandals resort. <laughs> In Atlantis. This was all a, a poorly, poor joke that I think didn't hit, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Don't worry. At all. Neither do we, so it's all right. How are you doing? I'm I was saying that you've been on two shows. Right now, right? You've been on two shows yeah. where your characters either live or from Atlantis. Right. So I was asking if there's... Oh, no, we're doing this again, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm terrified. Let's, let's do it really slowly so um, it's really obvious that I, I still aren't getting the joke. Plus, I love beaches. Me too. Two. The movie with the two women who yeah. love each other so mm -hmm. much. And they're, they're singing the on the beach. Beneath yeah. each other's wings. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm <laughs> really... I've had a weird month. How about so you? So I've had a weird yes. life, so I'm glad you we're have? finally talking. <laughs> uh, why was it weird? You know, I never used to pay much attention to this, and I have played a lot of people from outer space, so when people talk about astrology and stuff that happens out there, I'm like, you know, I'm the daughter of a scientist and mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But every time Mercury goes into retrograde, mm -hmm. which apparently five planets currently in retrograde, my life turns inside out and upside down. Mm. Yeah. In every possible way. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel more upset the fact that there are five planets in retro retrograde and Mercury gets a credit for it. Right, yes. you know, I mean, usually it's such a diva, but now there's quite a few, like Mars and all these other planets. Yeah, um, so what's going on? I mean, you're on the CW's The Containment, which is a great show. It is, and we just got the news that as a, even though it's a limited series event, it will not be picked up for another. No. Yes. But well, they can go fuck themselves. I, <laughs> On something blunt and large. Um, uh, no, I have a lot of... <laughs> so wait, let's go. <laughs> they want to sit with... Do you want to stay with sandals and Atlantis? Uh, <laughs> I know, seriously, I'm going to wake up and go, why did I say that joke? Wow, I'm going to be... I'm just going to go and check my IQ again because I think it dropped. Just Google I'm sandals, thinking. they got some great deals. <laughs> <laughs> 
all honesty, though, that's yeah. awful. It, well, it's on the CW, uh, right? Yes, and we no love lost with CW or WB. They have been amazing, and we've I felt personally spoilt rotten. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would actually put lights on when they took photos of us for publicity, and that's <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a big deal for me. In Australia, we are they're so cheap on a lot of the productions that you know you do your own stunts not because you're you're physically adept. It's because they're too cheap to hire yeah. stunt doubles. Um, but it was pretty funny, actually, when we heard the news. I was out helping some dear friends of mine in the desert and... Mm -hmm. Burying <laughs> bodies. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do I, in the I desert? I think they <laughs> wanted to kill me by the end because I had made this sort of why I did it. It was kind of like everything slowed down and I said, I will cater for you. <laughs> <laughs> And um, when the phone rang, well, actually, there'd been a lot happening that day. I got some other bad news. We didn't have very good cell coverage anyway that mm -hmm. day. And, of Sprint, course, the right. only two calls that come through were yeah. to make sure that I hear that my life is just kind of, you know, the floor's fallen out from, from underneath. So I'm bringing this damn chicken that is par-cooked to, to <laughs> Joshua Tree with this other sweet guy who's sitting in the RV and this woman who's highly accomplished individual and overqualified to be driving is driving the RV <laughs> and I'm sitting on a set of lights kind of like this and then the chicken slides off the table and all the sauce goes everywhere and I'm doing sort of this and then the phone rings and I answer and it's my gorgeous co-star David Jesse and I'm sort of I can't maintain the position but I'm trying it's all right <laughs> and he's like this <laughs> I got it <laughs> I'm ready <laughs> And I sort of pick up the phone and I hear, Claudia Blank, I want to tell you that it has been an absolute pleasure working with you every single moment. I'm like, wow, and he's going for it. It's a monologue <laughs> and the chicken's sliding off the table and the RV and the sauce is going everywhere. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a weird bit of news because we weren't expecting it, I don't think, for another week or so. And then I think our... Like, you know, you have a contract and they have a certain date by which they have to. Mm -hmm. Now, you were also telling me that the upsetting part about it was you guys have filmed the entire season. Yes, and, and it will be yeah. aired. And it will be aired. It but a lot of aired. fans, when they saw the cancellation notice, went, oh, no, the show's done forever. Right. But it's an amazing time to be making content. So there's, there's probably still quite a few places that might. Netflix? Pick it up. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, all those places. Nice. And yeah. Well, that's, that's going to be fine. I'll just keep filming it in my garage. Cause <laughs> I, uh, hey, hey, welcome to After Dark. I just. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Let's go back real quick. Excellent. So first. To sandals and To Atlantis sandals, no. Just um, <laughs> call back, though. It's the third time we third can't time. do that anymore. I won't anymore. do it again, I promise. I know. Um, so Australia, yes. you're from there originally. Originally. And then you've also filmed Farscape in Australia, correct? I did, yes. And what was that like? Um, well, cheap, mm -hmm. as I said, you know, <laughs> cheap. So there were all these people in the, I mean, it was a very ambitious production. The Jim Henson Company, who created The Muppets, amazing genius group of people wanted to do fast turnaround but high quality, you know, mm -hmm. high production value content. So we had this overly ambitious schedule with these people who were in, at, you know, at a minimum four hour makeup. Mm -hmm. So, and we, because in Australia you don't have the same union laws, actors didn't need to have a turnaround. Mm -hmm. So they would just roll these actors in every day. At first it was make own way and then they realized we were all going to have accidents because they moved us out to a, you know, somewhere really far away from the city. So they would at least transport us. So we would just kind of not bother changing and just go to sleep. And then as soon as the car beeped outside, we'd just go out into the car and fall asleep again or learn our lines and go back to work. Um, but it was really amazing. I have really fond memories. There were days where we would be out on the sand dunes and fanging around. That's an Australian technical term for going very fast. Um, on these dune buggies that were like Mad Max things and they'd have all these live explosions and we had this amazing pyrotechnic team who were so excited by the gig because we didn't, we didn't really have things of that scale at that time mm -hmm. in TV. And so at the end of the season, um, they, the pyrotechnic guys were just like, we've, got, we've, we've had a really great year and we've organised a surprise for you guys. <gasps> so come outside. And so we all came outside and we were on this jetty at um, Homebush where they had the Olympics and it's a swamp. It's really disgusting out there. <laughs> um, but they'd set up this, they'd made these fireworks for us and made a firework display. And these are the guys that actually help out on the Sydney Harbour Bridge on New Year's Eve and oh they're really God, famous fireworks. Awesome. And 
I was like, oh my God, can I light one? And they said, yes. And I said, what do I do? <laughs> and they said, you light it and then you run like fuck, Claude. <laughs> And it was pretty brilliant. I mean, they let you get away with all sorts of stuff in Australia. They don't sort of mollycoddle the, the, the actors, which is great. You nice. get a lot of freedom. Cool. Yeah. So I got to ask, like, with Farscape, with Stargate SG-1, like, you've kind of developed this following for, you know, your resume of sci-fi work. Yeah, hang on. How come I'm almost sci-fi royalty? Because <laughs> I was... I was just sitting there and I heard... Listening? Yeah. Well, it's like, you know... Um, I think, <laughs> I think sort of sci-fi royalty is actually more because if you're so far in it, you're like, what's that person's problem, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. What I want to know is who is sci-fi royalty if I'm... If um, I'm I consider Mark Hamill or... Jeez, um, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> sure. Sure. But you are you are sci-fi royalty. I mean, you, you've developed such a huge following, especially among a lot of uh, fans who are like, the one thing I, I think about, especially sci-fi, the content, is that it with the invention of the internet, obviously, and streaming and everything, your stuff lives forever. Yes. But sci-fi has a unique cult following that I feel like a lot of other genres don't have. I feel yeah. like horror has it also, but sci-fi, it's like the fans are super fans. Yeah, and I, do, I mean, I'm, we're really lucky because we get, you know, it's a really high IQ. You know, the <laughs> intelligence of our fan base is extraordinary. And I love, I mean, it's, I'm just really lucky, I guess, because I got to play these really interesting women. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, you know, the white picket fence, girl next door type. I actually do look quite alien. I remember speaking to this um, woman who was a medium once, and she said, you know how you've always felt like you're an alien in human form? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I have. That's because you actually are an alien. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I knew it! <laughs> um, but I, I, I was watching, I think it was Linda Hamilton on Terminator 2 and Sigourney Weaver and Aliens. I was mm -hmm. sitting there in the audience and my parents were like, what are we going to do with Claude? Like I was a major loser and they were so worried about me and, you know, <laughs> what I was going to do with my life. And I looked up at the screen and I saw these, you know, these chicks and I was like, well... I can do that. Yeah. And then, and it happened, and it's a, just amazing that in science fiction they let women, you know, it's like that joke that John Stewart always used to make, you know you're watching a film that's set in the future when there's a black president. <laughs> so now that's actually happened, it'll be, you know, it's a you know, film set in the future when there's a female president. And for me, it was like, well, you know, it's probably science fiction and set in the future if the women are strong and taking roles in leadership. So I've been lucky <laughs> to, you know, have this, you know, have these really great roles to play and be my true self as an alien, obviously, as well. Nice. Are there any of those other kind of roles coming up? Any new projects on the horizon? Oh my god, well, I only just got fired. Let's see. <laughs> I'm just talking about know, the rebound. I'll let you, know. you know. What's that? <laughs> Gotta get back on your feet. Right? You know, I actually, someone. <laughs> huh? Someone once told me that um, if you wanna like move on from something, or like break like a uh, depression or a spell or something, you just have to yell it out as long as loud as possible. Oh yeah. Or in our cases, as medium as possible, not to blow our speakers, but say something, <laughs> you know, like like say like I don't want this to be anymore. You know, like Okay. Do you want to do it right now? Sure. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Sure. Why is pasta so delicious? That was rubbish. Are you not gonna shout it? <laughs> Why is pasta so delicious? Why the fuck does this shit keep happening to me? <laughs> Done? It's gone. Really? It's gone. Oh, I have so much more in the tank. You're cured. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and do it in the bathroom. This is fun. <laughs> I apologize if that's all you hear from now on. It's just me in the bathroom. Um, Pasta really is delicious. <laughs> it's so good. And it's, it's always served in such big portions. It's yeah. so upsetting. Well, but when it's gluten free, I think you, it's better for you. That's true. Yeah. You brought some straws with you? I did. Uh, Jagan? Mm -hmm. Jagan's our talent producer, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so now what is this all about? So um, I've been thinking about what I can do if I'm not acting. Mm -hmm. And the answer came back quite clearly, nothing. Um, that's why I made sure, and it's why I made sure I was a really bad waitress, so that I had to have, the acting had to happen for me. 
But the one thing I learned how to do when I was a teenager, I think it was A.D. Phillips who taught me this on a holiday somewhere. He's thanks to in and out or what my friend calls a little sum sum. <laughs> um, it's one of the best things ever, finding out that there was a secret menu. I know, it's really amazing. Yeah. I also love how people think there's, like, there's more to the secret menu. There's I know. like six items, but people are like, no, seriously, if you go in the back <laughs> and pay someone, there's a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you just, it's just like LA with like clubs and everything. You just need to know a higher person than we know, and exactly. then suddenly there's a whole other world that opens up to you. All right, so I would just sort of, you know, soften up your instrument. <laughs> <laughs> First time for everything. Um, all right, so have you ever played a wind instrument? Uh, I played a trumpet, which isn't a wind instrument, right? Is it a wind instrument? Yeah. It kind of is. Is it? It is, right? It is. So is it? Yes, it requires us. Yes. Yes. Let's ask the experts. Uh, so you need a flute embouchure for this, which okay. means technically if you put your finger underneath and you bring your top lip over, you're trying to blow in a straight line okay. onto the straw. Let's do this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm going to be OK. Neither right? Cash and I are even going to come close to that. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh -huh. She's in the band. I know, she's in the band. Thanks, Maureen. Yes. You yes. try it, you go. No, you go first. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> so containment is going to end up on a streaming service. We know it's going to happen. Or we'll shoot it in my or your garage. Perfect. Well, you're at my garage, so this is where it's going to be shot. Right. We already have the resources. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. Um, and you're going to go home and look up what sandals is. Yes. And I'm going to learn never to make a joke like that ever again. Oh my god, I feel so bad. Don't worry about it, I feel bad. I'm oh such an amateur. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> but when you find out, will you like totally, when, when all the good news comes that containment's back on? Oh, I thought you were like, when you find out, you can say, when you when work you find out what the joke means, when you text <laughs> me and say, got it. Uh, but please do that also. Okay. Um, but uh, when the show comes back, will you come back onto the show? Yes, I would love to. Perfect. And I would love to to join this band. Perfect. Come hang with Maureen in the Mercury Five. Nice. I can actually do this in, with the song Groove is in the Heart, same time, same pitch. That's where the whistle comes from. Can you give us the beat? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plenty of laughs! Thank you for watching After Dark with Julian Clark. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com, After Dark Comedy, and follow us on all our social media handles. I'm Julian Clark. Another round of applause, Claudia Black. Yeah! Marine in the Mercury Five. For After Dark, good night. I don't remember when I dreamed you were the one. I don't remember our goodbyes. I thought my bed was much too big, but I was wrong. Like Goldilocks, it just feels right. I don't remember why.